The Nebraska Corn Huskers, Scott Frost. A lot of people thought that this would be a do or die year. I think with the new athletic director coming in, maybe it's not. But, you know, win total sits at six and a half. FPI projects them to go six and six. Uh, Mike Riley just destroyed uh, everything that built this program. It, it's And I, I hate to say that because I do think that Riley is a, a, yeah, okay, he's an okay coach. But everything that made Nebraska special, right, their walk-on pipeline, their strength program, like with all of that going away before Frost got there, we knew or we should have known that this was going to take multiple years to get this thing back rolling. Uh, it was never going to be, you know, a quick fix kind of thing. The quarterback competition this year, there basically is none. Like this is Adrian Martinez's team. Sure. And if that's what was causing him – issues the last two years or three years, whatever it's been. Uh, if that has been his issue, then I don't know what that says about him. Like I, that seems to be uh, a little mentally frail if you're having to, if you're not playing well because of competition, but either way, it is his team this year. They've got transfer skill players kind of all over the place. Uh, a guy to watch out for Montana wide receiver, Samori Torre. Uh, they, they got plenty of weapons this year. Like, even with guys that were transferring out, they got weapons. Their coaching, you know, was a little out of sync last year. Like, if you watch them in certain games, I mean, they got a win over Penn State. They got some they got some decent wins. They went 3-5 and five last year. Not great, but, you know, I, it, it, was, it was strange. Like, the play calls were weird. Just in almost every game, there were weird spots that it almost looked like they didn't know what they were doing. Like, they were just scrimmaging. Like, this was a... a fake year or whatever, which, I mean, I guess in ways it was, but uh, top 10 in defensive returning production this year, defensive line, uh, they have improved overall. Uh, I mean, they finished top half of the Big Ten for the first time since 2013 on defense last year. I think they continue to get better. They got guys coming back. I I don't, the number is six and a half to go over is plus 110 to go under is minus 140. And I'm still going to go under. Yeah, I am too. I just I, I look at this schedule and I don't see, like, at the most, if I'm giving them upset wins, I I can get them to maybe seven. But if the number's six and a half, and I think it is much more likely that they go five and seven or six and six, yeah. I mean, three of their last four games are Ohio State, at Wisconsin, and Iowa. Like, <laughs> and I feel good about those. So... I don't know. I, I don't feel good about it. Like I, I feel like those three are guaranteed losses, and at Oklahoma is a guaranteed loss. And then, I mean, you got Michigan. You've got Northwestern. Hell, you, you got, got Purdue. Illinois, Purdue. I mean, even Buffalo. Like, this is like, the level that they're at program-wise. Yeah. Like, that's just where they are. If we're going to do an honest assessment of what this school is, we have to stop looking at them like they are on the same plane as Oklahoma and Ohio State. And they they're are certainly not, not. They're not close to Penn State or, or Iowa or Wisconsin or Northwestern. They're just not. No, not even close. Can they beat those schools? Yeah, sure, probably. Now, will they? I don't think so. I but, don't think so but either. can they? Yeah. that's a That would be a big upset, though. Okay? Yes. I just don't, I don't think this program is there yet. There's a world in which Scott Frost really isn't that great of a coach. There's a world in yes. which at... Central Florida at UCF. Right, he had everything built. He was able to recruit like a madman because you fall out of bed and you hit 20 athletes that are improperly graded by the rivals ratings just because there's so many of them in Florida. You can't have that many five stars. So a bunch of three stars, if they were in the state of Iowa, would be five stars. If they played high school football in Nebraska, they'd all be five stars. Yeah. But because they play against nothing but other four and five stars, they're they're viewed as threes. That That's just how it works. It's just not possible. Yes. The amount of athletes that you're able to have down there. If he doesn't have athletes, he doesn't seem to be able to to scheme. That's, I, I think my, that's, my issue was the play call. You, you talked about that. My issue is it looks like he's getting out coached every game. It's not just that the other side is better than you. Because there are games where they're in these games. Yeah. And they're playing well. And they're going on drives. And as soon as things get pressured and tight in a game, 
he seems to be the one to always flinch, to always make the mistake. Yeah, no, you're right. You're right. Um, I'm guessing you're saying under as well. Oh, yeah. No, under. Okay. under. I, I, think, yeah. I think six and six is their ceiling. I really do. I'd be shocked if this team wins seven games. I, I think I think you're right. I think they have a better shot at winning four than seven. Yeah. Yeah, I tend to agree. And I hate that. The, the, the sport is better when they're better. Okay? Like, I know we make fun of them. I know we crack on them a lot. But the game is is more valuable when they have something to offer. Yes. Yes. Big Ten is better when you have one of those big-time brands that is actually playing well. Yep. That's the way I That's the way I Thanks for listening to the Winning Cures Everything podcast. The website is winningcureseverything.com, and if you want to connect with us, we're on Twitter, at GaryWCE, at ChrisBGiannini, at Winning Cures, or you can email us, Gary at winningcureseverything.com, or Chris at winningcureseverything.com. Subscribe everywhere you need to subscribe, and we'll see you soon.